Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to East Vineland, New Jersey, and we're back here on Kubota Farm. So, yeah, we are in July, early July. I've got a couple, two, three quick things to catch you up on, and then we're going to get to work. So, take a look at the trailer orange, and take a look at the Kubota orange. Now, for me, that looks really, really solid, looks really, really good. And I'm saying this only because the mod author for the color configurator mod came out with an update. And I find this kind of interesting. This was the Kubota orange that I got the numbers from, the RGB numbers from Giants. Okay? And it's not bad, but to me it's kind of, it's always looked a little bit, darker i kind of attributed that to maybe the material of the trailer but at the same time it just it wasn't a spot on so the mod author has actually made it so that you can now adjust you can put it in standard rgb mode thank you so much or you can put it in Giant's RGB mode. And look at the difference in the color shift. Interesting. And I know that this, I googled Kubota Orange. And this, these are the numbers I found on uh, three or four websites gave these RGB numbers. 236, 96, 63. And I'll tell you, I think it's better. What do you all think? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's like... That's on-on. Uh-oh, I got rid of our trailer top guards. I better put... The <laughs> I, I hate that when that happens, and I wish, the, I wish Giants would actually fix that, because it should remember the configuration you had and i've noticed that that's that this happens um on other on other equipment um and i don't know if it's just mods that that happens to or if it's even giant space game equipment but anyways that orange to me right there look at the truck look at the the tractor orange and the trailer orange i mean they are slightly different materials like i think the kubota is probably a plasticky but man, is that pretty good. Okay, so that's the first one. Thank you, Color Configurator Mod. I wish I could remember the person's name for updating it. I know they made a couple, two other, uh, two or three other changes to it. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But that's fantastic. And I am going to go, I am going to go around to our other equipment that uh, I Kubota oranged and, um, and fix that, by the way. The next thing here is actually we can do this i promise i won't take a lot of time here doing this let's hop over to the pigs uh a big duh moment for me this is not a drop-off point brad look at it that's a fill point <laughs> yeah i don't know how what where my brain was but that's a fill point and i tested it and yes it is really nice. We can pull our trailer right up alongside our poop shed, our poop house, and it'll just fill it. We don't even have to worry about leasing a forage pickup thing or using the uh, telehandler if we don't want to. I mean, it's like a silo. I don't know why I didn't... Well, I can't explain why that didn't dawn on me, that that's not a dump point. That's a pickup or a fill point. That is a dump point. You know that. You all knew that. I was the only one looking from the outside in. So, yeah. I did sell some pigs. I sold 20 pigs again. So, um, we... Uh, man, did they reproduce fast? Holy cow. I sold them actually before I went into July. And now, we're, now our barn is full again at 350. Um, every time they hit... What is it? 1100 I think. 1100 bucks Or 1200 One of the two. I sell them, and there's usually 20 at a time. So it helps pay for their maintenance, their food and stuff. It's not that big a deal. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to get that out of the way. So 
color configurator and yeah I figured that out uh, I also let me do this real quick so that we can speed this up I mowed our uh, grass field I figured you you have all seen me do this multiple times so you didn't need to witness it again um, some of the grass went to feed the uh, the sheep and the rest of it went into our fermenting silo we are going to have a lot of silage again which is great because that is going to be big bucks the next thing we have grapes we have a lot of grapes actually and I'm standing here looking going wow yeah this is cool we'll grab the trailer and take the grapes over to the grape processing plant so the first thing I did was I leased the grape processing plant and I did that because every time I've leased where is that stinking thing every time I've leased um, I can never find it the first time I should there it is I've leased this but this time I actually remembered to exit the game and come back into it um, because if you don't do that with this lease mod when you start dumping things it doesn't detect them so it is ready to actually receive grapes officially that being said my next line of thought was okay Brad that's smart now why are you having them stored so I went through every one of these grapevine deals and I switched it to distributing. Yes, I actually figured that. <laughs> I actually figured that out on my own. That's a, that's crazy. So, anyways, so now these are all set to distribute. Unfortunately, and I kind of wish the game. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be a good idea. I was gonna say I kind of wish the game would take these and distribute them now, but maybe you don't wouldn't want that to happen. I don't know. I kind of wish it would. You know, because now these are going to sit here until I grab the trailer and move them over. Not a big deal, but I'll get that taken care of um, either with y'all or I'll do it off camera or something. It doesn't really matter. But we do need to get all these grapes taken over to our processing plant. Um, and, you know, there's no there's no hurry. But at the same time, the sooner we get them over there, the I guess maybe the sooner we can get some grape juice going. And raisins, I guess, too. So... How exciting is that? Now the next thing. Look at what we've got. Brought the old M5 over. Hello, little cutie. I purchased the mulcher. I purchased the subsoiler. And I bit the bullet and purchased the, mer the old, mer the old Hardy Mercury 4000 sprayer. Which actually is kind of cool. Um... I did buy all three of these. Yeah, we're down to 25 grand, but you know what? We're going all in with the olives. It is what it is. Um, and I took a look at our olive field. Let me bump this down so we don't get a headache. And I think, I think it's ready for mulch or for mulching. I honestly have never done an olive grove before, so. I'm just gonna guess this is mulch ready because it looks to me like the grass is pretty much full in full bloom so we're gonna start mulching our olive our olive dealio here grove I guess and there was something else too oh I know what I was gonna show you I picked this up I haven't I haven't actually purchased it yet but I thought this might be kind of handy if we get depending on what kind of um, yield we get out of these olives i just don't know what to expect but here's a mod that i picked up that is um, grape and olive storage and they come in three sizes so small medium and large the small one is a hundred thousand the medium is i don't know and the large is i don't know and the only reason i know this one's a hundred thousand is because i tested it um, I don't know why the fill volumes aren't over here in the description. Kind of bugs me a little bit. I'm going to only guess 100, 150, and 2 maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's 100, 150, and 250. I don't know. But um, they're all the... Well, yeah, I think they're all the same size. They're all the same size. It's just how much you can put in them. 
and they're kind of cool actually. Um, the both in both doors open. One's a fill and one's a um, dump, and nice lighting. Um, and I was thinking if we end up wanting to get get one, we could just we could place it over here. You know, kind of maybe kind of center it uh, with the grove, like this kind of a thing. Have the lights there and uh, might be kind of cool. Um, not in any hurry to buy it because we're not ready to harvest yet, but might be worth doing. Might be worth doing. It'd be a little handier, I think, to do that than to trailer fill drive over either to our silo which i think we can silo them at the farm because it's a multi-fruit silo or take it straight to the great or to the great processing to the oil factory and you know what i think bear with me one quick sec i think i leased i think i went ahead and leased that too just so that it would be ready when we went to use it uh, of course, I can't find that either here. Dairy, I think that's our great processing. Sugar mill. Where's our oil? That's our bakery, grain factory. Wow. Oil mill. Yeah. Did I lease this yet? I didn't lease it yet. Okay. I'll have to remember to get that leased be, um, before we uh, start bringing olives over. But we're going to lease this bad boy so we can um, get our olive oils, get our olive oils and stuff made. So enough messing around. Let's hop in uh, the little M5 with our mulcher. And let's just see. You know, let's see how this goes. I don't know. I I kind of started doing a little regret that I made them lengthwise this way and not this way. And then I thought, eh, this is better because there's less rows. But then I thought this would have been nice because then there wouldn't be off the street like this. So, I don't know. I get indecisive. Do we need to mulch this side as well? Or is it just in between? Let's try, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's see what happens we do with this side. So we lower, assuming turn it on would be helpful. Oh yeah, okay. Try not to run into the, uh, try not to run into the grapevine. Put the pedal down to the metal. Eight miles an hour. That's not too shabby. Actually, first person inside cab view on this is not that bad. It's actually kind of kind of pleasant if I'm being honest Let's see what kind of results we're getting here okay definitely doing the mulch thing that's for sure holy cow let's see is, is anybody looking nobody's looking <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that would work <laughs> uh, alright I'm just being silly now alright let's get uh Oh, man, this thing's got some pickup. Holy cow. Oh, no. You know what I think I did? Okay, confession time. Confession time. But this isn't on purpose. I actually meant to disable this mod. All of our tractors, actually, every motorized vehicle that we have right now, the horsepower has been doubled. Um, there's a mod that, <laughs> there's a mod that came out uh, today uh, what is today today's Wednesday I'm actually recording this a little bit early but there's a mod that came out that was double dub, the double horsepower mod I don't know what it's called but I think the double horsepower mod or something like that um, and yeah that's what it does it doubles the horsepower of all your tractors, your trucks, everything. And I laughed when I saw it just because I thought, man, that's actually kind of funny. Um, and I said, you know what, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to just skip a row and come back and get that. 
So is this the is this happening right? Because it seems like if I scoot over to the left more. I mean, is that is that really the way this works? Is you just kind of just get as centered as you can and hope and call it good? It seems a little bit. It almost seems like a slightly bigger malter would be would be better, right? Because it's really not getting. Like I feel like. I could just grind right up against the trees and do a better mulch job, but I'm assuming that's not what you're supposed to do. It seems like when the game first came out, I saw uh, a tutorial on, um, I'm not worried about mulching this grass, by the way, it needs to be mowed anyways. Um, I saw a tutorial on olive groves, and this is what they did was just a single stripe down the middle like this but I'm in my brain I'm thinking how is this actually going to impact I mean does this impact the yield at all or is this just kind of a do it because it's fun and what you're supposed to do thing I feel like, you know, what would happen if we just didn't, you know, just didn't mulch, didn't subsoil. The spraying I can kind of get into. I understand that, you know, you throw some fertilizer down. That makes sense. But I'm just not sure this is really going to make that big of a difference. I don't know. And we're using Giants, uh, we're using Giants standard um, olive grove um, plants. We're not using like, you know how um, East Vineland here has um, the mod author or the map author. Giants grapes, Giants olives, but then the map author actually has their own grapevine set up, which is three and a half meters, which I think is like, what, like a half a meter wider, I think. To so say grapevines are planted in rows, of course they are, and need to be cultivated, fertilized, and mulched to gain a full yield. They also need to be pruned after harvesting. Really? Did I not know that? Did you know that? Did it might is that is that what what the pruning? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. I do remember that. I actually forgot about that, but now I do remember the old prune job. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Okay. Well, hopefully, I mean, you look in the olive pack and it shows this mulcher and the subsoiler and the sprayer. So, I don't know. Evidently, it they want you to do it. It just seems kind of weird. Like, it's not really getting all of the, you know, all of the grass like it should be. It needs to be about a either a meter or a half a meter wider it feels like but uh, I planted these bad boys as close as you're going to plant them so I guess it is what it is just see how things go reckon probably absolutely destroying that mulch head from running over the blacktop the asphalt out there on the street Pretty sure probably shouldn't be doing that. Our little M5 has about 220 horsepower. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to disable that. I um, 
I just wanted to test it just to see what in the world because I wasn't sure if it was like I wasn't sure if it was like an automatic thing or if you had to go into customization and um, and like oh man, wow man it's just having a little difficulty here with my steering wheel um, if it's if you have to go into customization and like pick a double horsepower selection or something but it's automatic. I mean, you enable this mod and you're off to the races. And, you know, if, of course, you know, it's going to get labeled. It'll be labeled as kind of a cheaty mod and stuff. And, and I understand how people would feel like that, that it's kind of a cheaty mod. But at the same time, um, honestly, I would... I'm really not doing very well with my row selection here but at the same time I think it is kind of cool because if you're playing on a map and there's several of them out there where they they small equipment is fits best you know like if you look at your farmyard especially on a lot of European maps if you look at the farmyard um, they're small and you don't really have room to buy these huge tractors and if you look at like just the, the roads and the entrances to the fields you want to stick with small tractors and stuff but it, at the same time it's frustrating or it can be if the hills are really rolly and things and and you just don't want to deal with hauling heavy you know trailer loads back and forth and not being able to do it in a timely manner and stuff so I could see where this mod would actually make those kind of deals more enjoyable for people now I think <clears throat> excuse me I think my guess is it's PC and Mac only I don't know though I don't know I'll have to look and see I don't know if it's a script mod or not But it's a cool idea, and it's cool that they that somebody thought of it and put it out. I think uh, I think it could certainly be useful in different situations. And you know, I mean, like I've said before, you know, what's cheaty to one person may not be to another. And you know, we all play the game differently. We play the game our own way, our own style. Play it the way that we feel you know most comfortable some people have no problems with auto load trailers and some other people think auto load trailers are you know a huge cheat so it's it's just you know man would I be knocking I would be knocking so many olives off these trees right now it's a good thing it's a good thing I'm not really an olive farmer that's for sure I think I'd be wrecking it hard all right, let's uh, kind of make a quick work of it, though. It's not too shabby. I'll tell you, it feels like this little M5's got a lot more pep to it, though. I guess that's what adding, doubling the horsepower can do. Maybe that's why I'm having a little bit of trouble um, kind of controlling it. It's just, it's like having this little, this little thing on the back of it is just like <laughs> nothing towing around a little ant. So do y'all have any plans for the weekend? I don't think I really do. Weather's been stinko here. I'll tell you that. Today, um, forecast was like one to three inches, and then halfway through the day, I heard it went to, uh, it went to three to five inches, and it's it's kind of a really thick um, wet snow because the, the temperature's not, I think it's around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not really freezing. And I'll tell you, if it gets really cold tonight, which I think it's supposed to, um, the roads are going to be nasty tomorrow. I think there's going to be a lot of freezing going on. So that might get a little interesting.
the old Michelin's on my car are going to get a little bit of a workout. I'm a big Michelin fan. I don't know if any of you noticed that, but I tend to I tend to go with Michelin's a lot on the tractors if they're available. Pretty much anything that has Michelin's available, I tend to kind of go with them. I'm just, I guess I'm just a Michelin fan. I don't know why. I think my dad always, um, I think my dad always bought Michelin's and which is kind of funny because he's really not uh, the kind of person typically who... Because they're, they're a more expensive tire. I mean, they, they're they a premium tire, more or less, you know. And, and, I mean, there's more expensive out there, I'm sure. But they're certainly not in the... You know, they're definitely in the upper tier realm for, for price. But he is always just, like, sworn up and down that... Um, that they're the best tires he's ever had. He's always bought Michelin's and blah, blah, blah. And um, I kind of inherited some. And I got to tell you, I've um, they've been really, really good tires. They probably need to be replaced this summer. But um, I can't really complain either. But you know what? I've owned BF Goodrich. Um, I've owned... Uh, Goodyear's, I've owned BF Goodrich, I've owned Firestones, and if I'm being honest, I, I don't really know that I've owned any tires that I would look back on and go, wow, those are literally the worst tires I've ever owned in my life. Um, Pirelli's, I think I owned some Pirelli's even, but uh, the Goodyear's I owned were like these uh, I don't know what they were. Um, they were the directional tread, you know, where you have to, uh, they have to be put on in a specific direction, right? And, um, boy, I got to tell you, they were amazing in the rain. On wet, on wet pavement, they were, were they aqua treads or aqua something? I can't really remember. They weren't cheap either, but they were. They were really, really solid tires. Um, I was pretty happy with those. And then um, on my Jeeps, uh, I think on my Jeeps I've always like, always had like uh, either Wranglers or I had a set of. Um, boy, I'm trying to remember what that other brand was that I had can't picture that at the top of my head, but uh, maybe BF Goodrich something, but you know, you buy different tires for trucks and for off-road vehicles and stuff like that. And the Goodyear's were on a minivan. <laughs> the Goodyear's were on a minivan, and um, I'll tell you what, I, I was impressed. I was, I was definitely impressed with them. The only thing I kind of don't like about those directional jobbers is, you know, when you go to, uh, when you rotate, um, if I remember right, right, I think you, you can't do a normal rotation with certain tires because of the way the tread pattern is. But um, otherwise, they were really, really good. I think that does it actually for our. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I think that does it for our mulching. Yeah, I just kind of feel like there's... Like if it was just a little wider... You know, it could do a little bit nicer job. But... We're playing it by the... We're playing it by the Giants rulebook, so... It is what it is. It's about time to wrap this episode up, but just before we go, let's just grab this mulcher, or this um, subsoiler, and um, let's just take a peek at it and see what... Uh, Well, it's got a little weight to it, that's for sure. A 
let's check this out. Yeah. The old back end on the M5 droops down a little bit. It's a good thing we've got some front weight. Yeah, let's check out this subsoiler and see exactly uh, what kind of damage uh, we can do with this thing. All right, on your mark. I guess nothing to turn on, right? Nothing to turn on, right? Yeah, nothing to turn on. All right, let's get her. Let's get her. Whoa, yeah, okay. That definitely, that's definitely subsoiling. Yeah, okay. It's easier to almost go straight inside the cab than it is outside. Yeah, it's definitely leaving a different texture. I don't know if it really matters um, I was gonna say I don't know if it really matters I, I know that you're supposed to or at least I'm pretty confident you could definitely tell this thing's got a little more a um, little more drag to it than the mulcher had that's for sure I'm pretty confident, at least, that you're supposed to mulch, then subsoil, so I'm pretty sure that's the order. But then, as far as spring um, fertilizer, oh, part of me kind of says it would make more sense to do it before subsoiling and mulching, because I would think you'd want to get that fertilizer into the ground but I seem to remember specifically seeing this order, the mulching, subsoiling, and then fertilizing. Don't really know if it makes any difference in game though. But yeah, you can definitely tell this subsoiler is, is digging up. That's, that's for darn sure. And the magic corn is not being impacted at all by the subsoiler, so I guess that's some I guess that's some good news. Yeah, definite texture difference. Let's let's back this beast up here for a second. Let's lift her up. Get back out of there, little Kubota. So mulched. Subsoiled, definitely, definitely difference. Didn't do the end yet. And I guess if we're looking at precision farming, whoa, our, our score's going up to 78. I'll take that. Looks like our nitrogen level is kind of stinko. That'll be easy enough to correct when we uh, fertilize. And I guess we look here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Weeds, no weeds. Needs plowing, it does not. Needs rolling, of course not. I tell you what, if it needed rolling, I would have to seriously consider the sanity of Giants game developers. Uh, mulched. It was mulched before we planted, before we planted the olives. Um, I pre-mulched. I mean, does any? Yeah, it's growing. Ready to harvest. Harvested. Remove foliage. Not withered. Stubble tillage. Cultivated. Okay. So it is showing our cultivation. Seed bed. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't really get it, I guess, in a way. But... Hopefully, you know, it's not just going through the motions that it actually does make a difference. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess I'm just going to do it anyways. Why not? I think that's going to do it for Friday's Kubota Farm. Um, I'm going to probably finish doing the subsoiling 
and uh, oh, I think we'll probably have another episode this weekend. Something tells me you're going to see me again Saturday or Sunday. Um, and uh, we'll see where life takes us here on the farm. But we're in it now. We're in the uh, we're in the olive business now for sure. But let me know if you got any thoughts on this business with the mulching and subsoiling and stuff. If what the expectation is supposed to be for yield and does it matter really like i mean if we didn't mulch or cultivate our mulch or subsoil would it really matter i i can definitely see this the fertilizer mattering i would think but man this is not convincing me that this is really doing much of any good just because of all this stuff that's left over you know i mean you got all of this that it's missing. Hmm. All right, everyone. I appreciate you joining me, though. I really, truly do. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Oh, and tell me why you enjoyed the video, because <laughs> I would be seriously curious. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hopefully you do like the video. Uh, subscribe if, you, uh, if you'd like as well, just to join the old RQS gaming family, of course. My name's Brad. No surprise there. Um... And have a great weekend if I don't see you. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned to the channel because uh, I'll probably have something out this weekend as well. And uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And uh, thanks, everyone. Again, I really do appreciate you joining me. And I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.